But there is one more even bigger dangerous information I'm going to release right now. Okay. And this is not going to be released in any podcast, in any TV station. No intelligent analyst would even think of that. They might have a little bit of information. China. There is a deal right now wants to be happening between Iraq and China. Who really? wants? Who wants? Uh, big, big time. Iraq right now is going towards trying to make a big deal with China. This has been happening since the protests. This is one of the games they played to saying, we're going to calm the protests. Look, we're going to go make a big deal with China. We're going to exchange. We're going to make this country a better place. There's a reason why China is coming to the table. Because China wants to deal with Iran, but Iran has sanctioned it, and China is trying not to piss the United States. Okay? Mm -hmm. China is right now trying to make that deal with Iraq, because if they make that deal with Iraq, it means they're going to work with Iran. Because if you're in Iraq... You're going to work yeah, with Iran. Yeah, of course, of course. So Iraq <laughs> is the, the land where China and Iran want to work together. China does not want to make anything officially with Iran uh -huh. because they're sanctions and they don't want to piss the United States. But if they go make a deal with Iraq, and who runs the show in Iraq? And then it just goes, it funnels And right it goes Iran, in there. Yeah. And now, basically, there was a reason that Iraq chose China. Out of all the planet, they chose China to trying to do the deal and that's where what's happening right now that Iran is trying to still outsource still out to sell their oil they're trying to sell their oil they're trying to sell their things mm -hmm. but the only place they're using is Iraq and look 320 billion dollars missing out of Iraq where did it go yeah it went right to and, Iran and, uh, and this is this is not just stealing Iraq this is not just since the sections, the sections were recent. Iran has been making money and getting a lot of strength through Iraq. And that's why they never going to mm. let go of Iraq. By the way, that amount of money uh, yeah. missing would be the equivalent of the U.S. government had misplaced about $25 trillion. Yep, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because Iraq's mean. GDP is about $200 billion. So let me ask you this, Dan, because, you know, you were over there. Mm -hmm. Are, we have troops currently over there. Why aren't they checking any of these trucks? They're not there to do that. They're not involved. They're, they're there essentially to be QRF, train local forces, and be QRF in case Iran tries to attack or something like that. But if you, got, if you got information like this, would this cause you know Here's, a, a phone call to you know some commander saying, hey, man, yes. now you can start checking. There's, like, a, there's a division with, inside the agency called TFAD. It's Terror, Terrorism, Financial, and Arms Division, basically. So they track... Uh, digital money networks, the Hawala network, which is a hand-to-hand -hand currency exchange that is ancient in Arab culture. Um, they monitor all that stuff, money moving around. They absolutely have some inkling that this shit like this is going on. Just because they'll see $320 billion show up in Iran and that amount of money not, and leave Iraq. But mm -hmm. they're like, wait, Iraq doesn't even have that much money. What the fuck? And right. I want to clarify, $320 billion, that's over the 16 years. Yeah, yeah. Over the 16 years. Over okay. the 16 yeah, yeah. years. Yeah, sure. So they, they, see, they see that amount of money, and they're like, what the fuck? Like, where is this coming from? How Iraq doesn't... Like, Iraq is spending... We can tell that they're spending all their money on on uh, resources for the civilian population. They're not, like he said, they're not generating any kind of resource that they can sell to other people. But somehow money still coming in and going out it's weird as shit so tfad would know about that and they would certainly report it up the chain but is that actionable i mean look in the intelligence community sometimes it's good to know something and continue watching than it is to know something and try to do something about it like if this deal with uh china is really going through mm -hmm. what tfad and others would be doing right now particularly involved involving the state department they would be trying to find something super embarrassing about the deal or about the parties involved to keep China from making that deal. And then they will release it through a back channel to China. Be like, hey, we heard you're trying to fucking do this. Here's what we know about it. By the way, do you remember this very embarrassing story? Right, right. I'd hate for that to get out. Yeah. That's kind of how you play those games. So right. it's, it can be easier to do that than to just uh, – that is more effective than an actual um, – Sanction in the UN, in my opinion, is working the back channels. That's what people like uh, Charlie Wilson were so good at back in the day as, a, as an elected representative. Like to a to a 
to a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Right? But we've got a lot of weapons in our tool bag. We don't just have to fucking smash people all the time. There's a lot of smarter ways to deal with stuff. Like all the shit I talk about Reagan and his bad tax policy over the years. Rollback, which is where we started an arms race with Russia, broke the back of their economy, and that's why we won. That's one of the big reasons we won the Cold War. Right. Right? It was... There's three periods. There's containment, detente, and rollback. And rollback is probably the one that did the most damage. Yeah, financially, they just couldn't <clears throat> keep up. Right. right. Yeah. So that's what you do in war. You, you don't just – it's not like sports. In sports, if I've got a great fastball, I'm going to my fastball, even if the guy's a great fastball hitter, right, because that's my shot. If I'm Steph Curry, I'm going to pull it from 28 feet and shoot because that's my best shot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in war, it's different because – Shit happens in war. Somebody shows up two minutes late and the whole fucking operation's fucked or bad yeah. weather. There's so many things that can go wrong. So you play to a combination of your strengths and your enemy's weaknesses. If you know one of their weaknesses is they can't get money into the country the way they need to and they're looking to do a deal with a big country like Iran or uh, China or fucking Russia, then yeah. you fucking get in between it, fuck it up, do something to politically embarrass everybody, and then be like, oops. My bad, guys. Yeah. And that is more effective and less costly in human life than, than actually fighting. 